Yo, this is Christopher talking from Still Gold. Like and subscribe to Chris Tash Podcast. Do it. What's good, guys? Hey. hey. What's up? Yo, yo. Here on the Chris Tash Podcast. I'm here with uh, Todd Don, Candlelight Excuse. Genetics. And uh, we got Mo Pope and Chris talking from hey. Still Gold. Um, big fucking deal in the, in the studio today. Look at this. It's sitting, it's sitting in front of like three feet from fame right here. <laughs> Talk. For real, no. On some, on some real <laughs> shit. Definitely not talk about me. On some real shit, right? On some real shit. To start this off, I'm sitting there with my girl watching the Celtics game, and I'm like doing work and shit. But I'm kind of looking. And I'm like, what the fuck do I got to do? I got to do something. I look up. It's this dude's on TV. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! I got to call them. And then that's that was that's a gentle it. reminder. Yeah. So yeah. What, what's up with that? How'd you get on? How'd you guys get on TV? What is that? Because uh, it's dope. First of all, it's, yeah. it, it's pretty dope. It's yeah, pretty, it's pretty fucking dope. It was cool. I, um, it was through our, our homie, uh, who's that, Max? Yeah, Matt, well, uh, my homegirl got hired to do this commercial or whatever. Shout out Domain. Shout out Domain Davis, also a uh, uh, producer of the show Found. Uh, yeah, you know, basically hit me up and was like, yeah, if I, I want to do this, I want to do something that represents Boston that, that I know. You know, the Boston that I know. And she was like, I would love you to be a part of it. It was a tourism commercial. And um, and then uh, she got another gig. You know? <laughs> it was, so it was up in the air as of re- whether we'd be in it at that uh, point. And at that point, it was supposed to be me and uh, Jalen Brown. Oh. You know, so that was the commercial. But then it morphed over time. Jalen's schedule changed because... The man had to go, the schedule, you know, everything got pushed back. So it went through a bunch of iterations. And um, then my homie Max took it over, uh, took over the directing gig. And then we, you know, we were kind of solidified that we were going to be in it. So, yeah. So shout out to, uh, you know, Max Esposito. So so what I'm hearing is that Jalen Brown owes you a commercial. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing Jalen Brown is a commercial. That's, what that's pretty much what you're saying. From what I hear, he makes beats too, so maybe he could toss me a beat or two. There you go. You know, <laughs> you know. That's dope. No, actually, I mean, I saw you guys do City Hall Plaza, mm-hmm. which was like yeah, a huge was, deal. Yeah. Like, was, I mean, like yeah. just for, I mean, just just for reference here. I mean, I don't really know too many other local acts that have gotten to do something like that. I mean, am I wrong? Yeah, I mean. It's, it's, you know, if if our band wants to do a festival, we got to do it ourselves. So. <laughs> so can you so can you explain can you explain kind of what the, what it was like? So, uh, you know, back in the day, if the, obviously, if you had been in hip hop and love of Boston hip hop for many years, you know that there were the hip hop free hip hop shows down at City Hall. Yep. Years ago. Slick Rick, Mac yeah. Miller. Yep. De La. De La. De La, yeah. De, yeah. De La is one of my all time yeah. favorites and watching them crush that set. Yeah, that was, was crazy. A big a big plus for me as as, as a youngster, you know. But we um, actually um we actually got we rocked the last one. With, yeah, uh, we, rocked Mac the, Miller. we rocked the last one. Oh, you guys rocked the Mac Miller show. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. We were that right was insane. Mac. That was there was like a <laughs> that was that was a, a years ago. Oh yeah, yeah many oh years yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. Big Manino like, was still around, and yeah, like, it was like ten years ago. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. what 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 happened was like basically Mac didn't have an album out yet. He just had like mixtapes and like singles and and stuff like that. He didn't his album wasn't out. So when they booked him. It was just a name. Yeah, you know, it was like he was a name. He was like an up good, and coming, yeah, dude. up and coming dude. He had a, he had a buzz, you know, but he didn't have an album out. And uh, that the week that Monday, I think his album came out. Ah, uh. and so they were projecting about four thousand people to come. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what showed up. Yeah, like way more. My man, oh, yeah. We were on stage yeah. and we were looking at the parking garages across from City Hall Plaza, and there was people on every tier of the parking garage just watching. Like it was people as far as you could see in City Hall Plaza. It was wild. It was like a Patriots parade. It, yeah, legit. It was crazy. Like it, he yeah. had that kind of impact, like that fast. It, it was kind of wild to see to see that, and like legit during our set, <laughs> there was a quasi riot. <laughs> Cause yo, we're what, during your guys' set, yeah, I mean, because so, you guys don't bring like that kind of energy or anything. It like was, that. it was definitely the crowd. It was the crowd was, it was wild because it was like 
all the kids from like the suburbs came out and like all, all the, kids. the kids. I don't know if like, I've ever seen was... anyone scream louder on stage than this dude right here next to me. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you should have heard these kids that day. Because every white kid from the from suburbs every, came. Every, yeah, yeah. I, I was there. I was yeah. there. Yeah, 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 I was so, there. so I see one bu- like can of soda go and I'm like, okay. And I see like three go back. Next thing you know, you see like two liter bottles of soda <laughs> flying across. And I'm like, yo, this is about to get crazy. Menino comes out on stage and he's basically like telling, the, he's like, I'm going to shut it down. So basically, I, and then I told the crowd that we're going to turn this car around if they yeah, don't for, stop yeah, the nonsense. First, first they asked us to say it. Yeah, they're like, you guys tell like, them to chill you, out. You come in. I was like, yo, they ain't throwing, as, as long as they ain't throwing them up here. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, right. I'm going to keep going. Sure. Like, you know, and like, so, it, it, you know, it was partly like the vibes is crazy. People were moshing. Yeah. You know, it's it's cement. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, people yeah. were moshing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> and like and uh but yeah they told us to, they told us they were gonna shut it down but yeah. like and then they were like we're not gonna let Mac out you know yeah there then, then those kids calmed right down oh yeah. shit it's a groundation right there right. yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. they straightened up <laughs> real quick away, right? yeah, that, that was the, that away. was the ending of it cause I mean yeah. these, these kids came to the city and they fucked it up yeah breaking yeah. windows yeah. oh yeah on cars and yeah. shit and like kind of shut it down so you know keep hip hop black (laughs) (laughs) it was so like I mean Mo being here is a funny way to tell the story in City Hall Plaza with Slick Rick I was on stage with Danger Big Sug Slain um, that picture with JCO and all them I was like right there with the whole shit before Slick Rick came out Um, and I remember Slick Rick coming out now at that point in time hip hop as we all know in Boston is pretty much you go to any club it's all white dudes Right, it's just like it's like nineteen white dudes, like maybe one chick that was dragged there by her boyfriend, like, and that's that's the crowd. Yep. At this show, it was the Slick Rick show. There was I don't know six thousand people there, five thousand people there, and they were all inner city kids. Mm. There was no white kids there. I mean, there were, but they were mixed in. But it was like this was a show that like the city could actually come see. So Slick Rick walks out on stage and he goes, "This is the this is the moment where hip hop met white people," and I was like, "Oh fuck!" And it goes dun dun. Dun dun dun! Uh, and the fucking place went bananas, and I was like, "Yo, this is the most hip hop shit I've ever seen in my That's fucking dope. life." It was like, just the whole cr- Menino was jumping, Shug was jumping. You know how big that motherfucker is. Everybody was jumping and shit, and it was just like, I went from embarrassment to like, "Oh my god!" Like this is. This is dope. You know what I mean? Yeah, so absolutely. So so that's the, the so that that's really where the idea came from. Is like you know wanting. In, in in hoping for another free show that people can come to and not have to um deal with like you know long lines and and craziness like i just came to the day La show i went and got a burger went to the day La show you know and then went home safe you yeah. know so um and i went to city hall to ask them basically how to do it how do how do how do i do it like you know and literally that day that I went there, they were like, so when do you want to do it? Oh, shit. And I was like, well, I wasn't really, <laughs> I wasn't really prepared <laughs> I was for prepared that. For I was just trying to figure out. I was, like, out, I, I was like, just know. trying to be friends. I didn't know uh, we were taking uh, it to the next level already. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Billy Dean Thomas, who was in the meeting, basically said, um, I have some resources. They're probably going to give you some resources. Why don't we put our resources together and collaborate on this thing and make it something that we we can both be proud of you know um we have to activate this area anyway you know so yeah. let's let's make it something cool and um and yeah we had what two and a half months to make that happen it was quick oh shit it yeah. was real quick yeah it was two and a half months and it was it was intense it was a lot of a lot of fucking work like you know and um but we made it happen and uh shout out to uh the uh, mayor's office of arts and culture because they really um they really showed out for us you know they really like laid things out on the table for us and um and 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 val val b you know it was just something that was very special and we worked hard on it um and yeah we hope to get to do it again. You guys are going to do it again. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. You know, it's like that's the 
that's my thoughts on it but you know it's like there's a lot of work that goes into it it's a yeah. lot of paperwork paperwork for sure like, really oh, we yeah. didn't know up permits until like i said permits, two yeah. months before you yeah. mean throwing a festival on city hall plazas there's a lot of paperwork yeah. for that you, you do <laughs> I, didn't, I would have never thought i <laughs> figured you show up on a stage and they're like yeah fuck it go for it i, yeah. well, I mean luckily we kind of i mean not that that's what we got but they definitely helped us along with the process but like nowadays it's like now a lot of people want to do festivals in city hall plazas so it's like yeah. the we all we had to go we have to go through that application again just like everybody you to, else you have to do the you have to do the whole you, you have know, to do the and, process yeah. and then not only do the process but city hall is to say is this worth it yeah like i was gonna say you guys have yeah. to like there has to be a following there has to be a worth ethic there has to be like a match for this to like work yeah. you know what i'm saying Absolutely. and you guys have obviously built up that over time yeah. and just for the just to play devil's advocate it is kind of funny at the end of the day because like you're not like strictly political with your your music but you definitely have a political like you know siding to it yeah, yeah. and to be working with working with city hall they got like the the loudest <coughs> voices in the room that might be in opposition of what city hall is doing to actually work with them yeah, which is probably a smart idea in the long run yeah well you have to you have to work with you know, in order to get anything done, you have to work with people that you don't necessarily always agree with. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things, you know, it's a, it's a give or take, you know, and I, and I understand that, you know. That's dope. They gave us some leeway, too. Like, we definitely didn't want a huge police presence. So, you know, they let us, you know, the, the, the security at City Hall definitely took, took a more, you know, upfront role in that and there was no issues yeah there wasn't any issue or, right? or anything no issue. So it, was, one, it was one very minor incident at the front of the stage and that was handled so discreetly that like yeah you, i saw no, a lot of no one ever noticed, i didn't even no know one even yeah, yeah i didn't see that thing. i saw a lot of families yeah, yeah. that's was, what i oh, yeah, yeah a lot of families a lot of kids were there i saw a lot like a lot of kids were there yeah it was yeah. dope it was yeah. dope and everyone was being really respectful to that fact too like you know um yeah, it was it was it felt it felt good. It felt like it felt like a community thing mm -hmm. and it felt uh you know, hip hop was definitely represented. It was for the it was for the 50. Um so yeah, I mean it was it was a beautiful day all in all and uh I think I think the the fact that it got pulled off with no incidents um is a is a big thing a testament especially the 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 kind of past in Boston of of not, you know, letting hip hop be in all these venues. It, it, if you really want to even say it, I mean like that's a spot where a man got stabbed with the American flag and you had dead press singing fucking hip hop on that very oh, yeah. same that fucking was spot. Very, oh, yeah. Like if you that think about poetic. that shit, like Absolutely. you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's there's levels to this shit. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Like in Boston has its own whatever with that kind yeah. of shit. So the definitely it was definitely something. You know what I mean? It's yeah. from being part of the music in the city for so long, it was the first time I had seen something mm -hmm. that magnitude done by local people. You know what I'm saying? At that level, I thought it was pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, we're, we're we're always trying to do something. You know, I think that that's what in the spirit of hip hop. Hip hop is always changing and uh, permeating every part of the world. You know, it's it is now a part of every day, and people don't even know that this thing over here is because of hip hop or this thing over here the reason why this person talks this way the reason why uh uh what's that dude angus on uh euphoria is speaking how he's speaking it ain't because he's just a cool white dude <laughs> you know it's because he you know he grew up way in the bay and you know around people of color you know so you know at the end of the day like we you know i think that we're looking at this thing as like this hip hop shit is for everybody and how can we do something cool always? How do we keep pushing ourselves to try to do something different and, and something that everyone can enjoy, you know? So we've always tried to like kind of activate the city in a way like Mo is really big into that and like bringing people in, especially people of color into these places that maybe not necessarily they've always been into. Like we were, as far as I know that we were the first hip hop group to perform in the museum of fine arts yeah, I was just gonna bring that so, up. So, yeah, yeah. and I mean, and that, and things like that. We've, we've, you know, we did an album unveiling at the at the MFA. We have a really good relationship with them over there because I think they see, you know, the the side that yeah, I mean, this is a, a chance to bring people who may not feel comfortable coming to the museum. You know, being a young black kid in in Boston, I'm sure it's not <laughs> the most you know yeah it, 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 it's it's kind of a it's a looming building and it's kind you know what i mean and it's, mm -hmm. so it's like it's it, I, they wanted it to seem that it is for them it's for everybody it's not just for the white kids who go on field trips and all that stuff it's for everyone who can come and enjoy it and i think that was a 
that was a big thing for us too to try to get these these people into these places that not necessarily would it would happen. Yeah. Also, first, uh, you know, just not to toot our own horn. First, first hip hop group to play with the Boston Symphony Orchestra as well. Oh shit! You know, so yeah, yeah. How does something like that even happen? Man, the just, pandemic. Uh, no. Pandemic well, no, no. no yeah. the, well, oh, even. you say how did it happen? Yeah, how, how did something like that? How does something like a hip hop? Um, I sent yeah. a, I sent an email. Yeah, mo- I sent an email out to yeah. Boston yeah. Symphony Orchestra. Like, let that like, be a. I don't want to cut you, but I want to just stop with real quick on that. Like, let that be just a testament to people that like don't ask for shit. Mm-hmm. Like, cause that's part of the deal too. Was like my man said, the world's the world's run by people that show up for it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's Absolutely. like you got you got to like you got to ask. You got you have to ask, and a lot of people don't. So it's like how how'd you get symphony orchestra? I asked. What's the, the worst? The <laughs> worst that they can say is no. no. Yeah, you got to put your and foot also, in the door. Like think about think think about the 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 thing. It's like there's this place that is centrally for. Uh, white people who have, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. It's it is it is not a poor white people thing or poor black people thing or anything like that. It is really a a white organization of people that have money and can understand what classical music is, you know. So and it's right in the in the in middle, Boston, yeah. right right in the area that you would not expect it to be to to for that. You know, and um, so I was like, you know, in the email, I basically was like, how many, how many brown people come in your, your place? How many people that s- serve this community come in your place? You know, it, it's 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 fair that we would want to figure out a way to work with the people who are in this area as well, and show them that they are welcome here. I love classical music. You know, and I have been in that building, you know, watching, watching dope shit. I guarantee the vast majority of the people that lived in that area for 50 years were not going into that building. Yeah. You know, so, um, you know, it's different now. It's gentrification, all that. But like most of the people that lived in that area did not did not have any money, you know, so. you know, that was the conversations. To their uh, credit, they were willing to listen and have the conversation. They could have said no and it would have been fine, but they at least had a conversation with yeah. me. And um, and what we were going to do there is have a, a um, full-on hip-hop, a Boston, uh, like a, a historic Boston hip-hop show backed by the Boston Symphony Orchestra and we wanted to book like legends you know we wanted to book younger generation you know but have them be backed by the Symphony Orchestra BSO yeah by yeah. BSO and they were like okay so <laughs> like so. you know they were like that and we and it took 4 years of our time to make it happen and then the pandemic happened well, I mean, the so. people on the level that are doing that kind of shit are like Jay Z with the Philharmonic and like Nas. Didn't yeah. Nas doing with the something in New York? He did it with. Yeah, he did um, with the New York Symphony. Orchestra New York Symphony Orchestra. Whatever, yeah. yeah. So like, you're talking about like fucking top tier artists yeah. doing this kind of shit. And uh, no, most people don't know that the Boston Symphony is the, the best. Yeah. So the it's best the, yeah, out of all of them. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know? Oh yeah, no, I know. So so it's like most people don't know that, but like yeah, man, you know, we worked hard on it, and unfortunately, it didn't happen because well, of, something still happened. Yeah, because yeah, something still happened, but what we what, what we set wanted, out yeah. to do, and all the people that worked hard on it from the BSO too, like that 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 was a thing too. It's like they these people put their jobs on the line for us, you know, and it. It, you know, just the pandemic happened. Pandemic, you know, kind of ruined it. But we still, we still got to rock out with them. We still uh, made some um, uh, lifelong connections, Absolutely. you know, with people that had never even heard hip hop. People that grew That's up dope. and never even heard it, and were willing to listen and try out different things. And you know, so yeah, they, they, to have uh, members of of that organization say this is this is why i play this is why i play yeah yeah you know that's, to do that's stuff dope. like this yeah, and a part of the series too which was cool is what we did was we paired members of the group with members of the bso just to have a conversation about music okay and like what music inspired them it's all on it's all on youtube you can you can check it out on our youtube uh page but yeah it's cool because the, the conversations that came out of that were just 
pretty some of them are pretty yeah. amazing like to see because like how similar you know some of these people were when they did they had you know music is the common is the common denominator in that and it was it was dope to see it, yeah. it, it is pretty dope man you, just watching you guys as well too, like progress through what you guys have growing into i mean you're almost becoming like i don't want to say like an ambassador for boston but like i mean i saw city hall give you guys the jerseys you're in yeah. the tourism commercials, yeah. like you're in all the big, Shout out to the, Celtics, the big institutions. Yeah. They got the Celtics. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? So it's like, you guys are kind of like, do you feel like yourself taking on that role? I mean, how do you feel about that? Man, I, I feel like there's so many people that that um, are deserving, you know, of that. Where, where, you know, you gotta, I don't wanna sound like too like oh like we're we're great guys like this is self-serving too i love hip-hop mm -hmm. you know i love i love to create i love to spit still i love the music i love the culture i love the people that i meet in the culture you know so this is very much something that uh, uh feeds my heart just as much as um i want to give back you know to what this culture is and what what it means to me you know so you know yeah okay so okay still gold now i know you've been spitting forever mm. you've been spitting forever like when did still gold become like a thing and how did that start mm, well all right so, <laughs> special blend yeah so yeah so when mo's first solo so if you know the history of Mo, and he was in a group called Mission um, that started in Boston, then went out to the back to the West Coast. Some of the members from were from out there. They so they went to the Bay Area. Um, I had moved out of the well, not the country, but I lived in Hawaii for a long time. We both came back around the same time. We reconnected then, uh, and then Mo was then working on his first well, not well, yeah, first solo record. Yeah, well, yeah, it was your first. Solo. How long ago was this? Oh, 10 years 15 years 20 no. years five almost, almost 20 yeah about 20 yeah almost mm -hmm. 20 um so yeah and then uh he was working on that that had just wrapped up and he was gonna go on tour mo got offered to do the warp tour mm. and uh we we just been working together and we had we've had this idea for a long time of trying to com combine because we we me and mo grew up I mean, we've we've known each other for a very long time. We met in high school, so you know we grew up going to shows together. We both into punk rock and hip hop, so we both you know dipped our toes in both those you know pools, and we kind of had this idea that we just kind of wanted it to to be us because hip hop and punk is a symbiotic same, thing, yeah. right? We yeah, all know, thing, yeah. well, not everybody, but you know, we know that. But so we wanted to do it, but not in like a corny like rap not, rock, we yeah, want like rap rock. You know, yeah. we didn't want, <laughs> we want that. that. Like, we just didn't want we that. We didn't want Limp Bizkit. I was going to say, you're not a Limp Bizkit fan. No. I don't see you listening nah, to Limp Bizkit. like, we wanted it to be... It's it's more it's not rage inspired I would assume but I mean you guys yeah. you guys have like a that. similar aesthetic and of stuff of course but we're more but we're more I feel like bro we're more on the hip hop spectrum of yeah yeah I give you that yeah like you know absolutely. what I mean yep, like yep. If, if rage was a little bit more hip hop I think that's kind of where we we would fall in fall in so anyway yeah so we me and Mo were talking and Mo was like you know I'm doing this big tour and Mo had asthma really bad at the time and we he was kind of like yo if you could just come kind of do my do my backups and stuff and then during then then we just started working this dj special blend big up jeff yeah, yeah and uh he good, he kind of was on the good. same level too he was doing these mashup joints and all this stuff and so that's when it kind of just started happening and yeah, then yeah uh blend was making beats yeah like that cool mashup rock, beats rock, yeah rock beats and i was like yo i'll write to that <laughs> like you know all right like i'll write yeah. to these beats and then Chris, being from uh, a punk uh, background, basically was like, yeah, we were just like, yo, just get you to scream on some yeah, shit. Yeah, let's do screams on some shit. Know? <laughs> and uh, it, was too, and it, it sounded so right that like people thought I was sampling screams from like records and it wasn't, it wasn't until people saw us live that they they figured out the oh. So seeing you guys live too, okay, so people that might not know who Still Gold is, mm -hmm. right? 
you guys do have an interesting like ensemble of instruments being like it's not a common like combination of instruments and <laughs> band members no so we're you, like we're a band yeah like, so if you guys band. can kind of go th- but even as a band oh true yeah what what, what so if someone that might not know what still gold is can you like just walk them through like who's in your band what they play what they do because it is a very eclectic it works but it's a very very eclectic thing well i mean we had at one point we had a, a Violin. I was gonna player, say you guys yeah. because me and Mo had... before Still Gold we had worked with this DJ and producer uh, Rain. I was gonna say yeah, the Rain, Big project. Up Rain, and yeah. we did three three albums with Rain. Three albums, Two. no three. 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 We did three yeah. albums with Rain, um, that we're super proud of, and that was kind of the beginning of like combine and Rain. We all kind of like morphed at that time into like what we was starting to, to what we wanted it to sound like you know uh, yeah. piecing that together and during then yeah we had a violin player yeah. we've had and uh <laughs> big up liam i mean yeah, yeah we well, what just, does the band consist of right now right now we have uh uh tim hall plays sax and keys uh uh the archetype plays guitar and keys uh and john omen plays the drums and then we have a, a punk screamer. Yeah, so I mean, it's like you got you got a dude with dreads rapping. You got someone like like playing the keys. You got a big, huge dude with a saxophone, and then you got a dude in the back with some New Balance on, just drumming away. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is like? It's just, but it, it's it works. It's just it's dope. Like you, did you guys like? Um, were you going for a specific thing when you when you kind of put all that together, or was it just kind of happened the way it happened? Um, it just kind of like yeah, yeah like, it was well it kind of grew over the records too right well like, yeah still gold started as yeah. two and then quickly became three and, and then, then yes, who were arc and then four and then five well no Mo and, yeah because Mo and, Mo and arc had definitely um they started the 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 idea of still gold and then I was working with Mo obviously so Mo brought me in on some things and then I was more on the second album then arc actually started sampling my vocals then into the actual songs so then the sound started to grow that way a little bit and then we added a live drummer and then tim came and he added like a saxophone tim's just a dope multi-instrumentalist and he's a poet as and well, yeah so. sax is the dope it's just a dope look to have yeah, anyway sax is. is a dope instrument we're trying to bring it back we're trying to bring <laughs> the sax bring solos the 80s, back the 80s uh sax solo yeah, yeah i was at a back i was at an event at, at hugh the other night jerry lewis gonna come for y'all yeah <laughs> hey so when when do you start getting so when do you get involved with these guys um i met these guys on their first tour with arc when they came to chicago yeah, because I yep. was work. Ark had just put a project out with Rusty Jux, or was getting. I forget where in the timeline the Rusty Jux project was, but it was I was right working. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was trying to get Ark and Rusty on tour. Okay, I was doing a project with Rusty at the time back when I was still doing music, and then Ark and I became friends, and I happened to come out here when I was looking to move here, uh, and Tort Song release party happened to be that same weekend. Ooh, yeah. And I was staying up the street at this house and because James, Duck Down James was doing an event at Arc Studio during the day and y'all had the party that night. Yeah. And I come in to see James because he was talking about marketing and stuff and I was going to participate in that. Um, and then I, I heard the album and I was like, all right, well, we have to do some shit. So Arc and I started talking and we ended up going on tour for two weeks in the UK and in France and really just connecting and having a good time. And then as I moved out here, I started just working with them a little. I'm not a part of the band or anything. I just yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. show up and help and, yeah, yeah. and, and no, figure out things to, to, yeah. to help push them a little more forward. Well, I, I want to kind of just, you know, segue into like, yeah, you know, yeah, what yeah. you're doing. So I'm just trying to, how you know these guys, how you met these guys. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. that's really what I did in the industry was just try to help people be better at what they did. Right. And just bring resources to bear and help people's brands grow and help people just create sustainable revenue for themselves so that they could move their projects forward. Now, when you hear someone like them for the first time, like, what are you thinking? Um, I'm not gonna lie, Tour Song is one of my favorite albums ever. Okay. Because it changed the way that I felt about the transition in hip hop from boom bap, which I'm 50, so like, I'm yeah. boom bap forever, uh, into what modern hip hop is becoming. Because the beginning of, of the change for me into trap music and things, there was no melody to it. Yeah. There was no layer to it, it was just, do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right? Like any fucking idiot can play yeah, three yeah. notes in a row, right? So when I heard Torch Song, there was so many layers to the way that they incorporated these things that it 
fundamentally changed the way that I looked at what hip hop could be. Okay. So from that point forward, I just knew that I had to work with them in whatever capacity. I How the fuck does that make you feel? Amazing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Like, did you guys? Like, did you guys know like that? A homie too. Like. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, that's a huge compliment for, man. for someone that you care about to like be like, yo, that's one of my favorites of all time. That's like. I appreciate it. That's why we've always rocked with Todd. Like, because as from the first tour he took us on, Todd's always had our back, like, no matter what. And he's always tried to, you know, have us be involved in anything that he's doing as well, too, and and vice versa. So, shout out to Wolverhampton. Oh, yo, we had times on tour, man. We had times (laughs) on tour. Trust me. You want you you want to give us a story real quick? So the first, the first, (laughs) okay. So so we were supposed to, we were supposed to have these shows. One of them in Scotland, and a a couple shows got got fucked up at the beginning of our of our tour leg of the tour. So we were gonna, we had like an extra week now in 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 England. So we were gonna the which was smart. We we we, our home base was in like the Midlands, like right in the middle of England, because we were playing shows all over the UK. So we were in this spot called Wolverhampton, okay? Big up Wolverhampton, big up the homie Alex is. There's nothing there, but we had a we had a good time. Yo, it is your typical lovely British small city, I would call it, uh, with some delightful pubs and uh kebab so, spot. Yo. So yo, we stayed at this hotel, right? <laughs> <laughs> like Yo. half of the hotel was like abandoned and the part that was open was just a straight up trap like <laughs> i mean like hookers in the lobby pimps just trying to converse with us and we have and now mind you we have all our shit all our gear <laughs> guitars keyboards fucking turned everything bro like we have it so we're marching all of our shit into this hotel and people are just grilling us, like just calculating shit in their heads, like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Luckily, because, you know, we're friendly, you know, we end up, you know, everyone was cool with us by the end, but this place was a straight up trap. Yeah. Like, we met, we met these, we met these two young girls, right? Oh, the runaways. Like, what's, what, what's going, what's <laughs> going on? We're like, what's Jesus. Going on? They're like, what's going on? Y'all are banned and all that stuff. We're like, yeah, we're a band. And they're like, um, we're going to come see y'all show. I'm like, all right, there's a small banter. We go on on about our, about our business. Come back out. These girls is out there again, <laughs> smoking cigarettes, or whatever. And we're like, it's a weekday. Yeah, like why are they here? What the fuck is going on or whatever? Right? They're giving <laughs> a little chit chat or whatever. But we're like, yo, there's something wrong here. I don't know what's going on here. Then. What we went we went to dinner yeah, we and came back eat, yo, we and came they're back. getting locked up. These yeah, yo, like kids. mad so, mad paddy this, wagons and shit out front. Yeah, like bro, these kids and ran they, the one of them had come from the group yeah. home that was next door to the hotel. So <laughs> yo, it was yeah. wild. Yo, this place Wolverhampton was just, is just real yeah. blue collar, right? And since it's in the middle of the country, and we the guy who booked it. all of our tours stays there, right? Like it's real easy for us to function from there. And to be honest with you, the cost of the hotel for the week that we stayed there, was, yeah, dude, big up to are for real uh cost the same as one night in london <laughs> so wolverhampton is real cool but like it's it, it's like it was, it's it was like familiar yeah you know i was gonna right? say yeah, yeah. like it's if you're familiar. from boston you get there and you're like all right yeah, i can I, rock I, with right. this you know like, I mean? this is cool like so we did three shows there and then we did went to france and did two more shows yeah. hung out in paris for a couple of days um and then came home yeah, yeah. paris was fun yeah we had fun man yeah, so I, a lot of a lot of free hash in, in Paris. That was great. Yo, and we almost got ran over by a motorcycle in Paris. A dude on a scooter on the yep, sidewalk. Yep. So we're leaving the radio sure. station interview, going down the street, and this dude's driving a scooter up the street and decides to swerve onto the sidewalk and can't see us and almost runs us all. Up. Yo, the whole thing was just crazy. Yeah. Best it, food in the world. We like, had a good time. And then after that, you came home and had a show where you lost your voice. Oh yeah, because the tours. So the crowd sang the album for you guys at the Oberon. Yeah, that shit was um, that was. We timed. Oh, you we got, you one did one of those. Favorite things. We timed it, that it was, perfectly. It was easily one of the coolest shits I've ever saw. Every time you see that shit, it gives me like goosebumps. It, like, it was kind of what like, that night was wild. Like it it, we was literally insane, like, had the album release. Like dude, I like I like three like, days after we got I'm back not, from a tour in Europe for two yeah. weeks. Yeah. 
Yep. It's okay. You can admit to crying on the show. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's okay. I'm not a. No, I'm we not, all kind of no, we all cry. We all, no, we we all, we all cry. Back, I had my family there. My daughter yeah. was in the military and she was visiting. And um, my daughter was in the military and came back for that show and um, okay, couldn't. Nah, it's dope. Couldn't perform like you know. It's like it's you know. So and now this was like night of, mind yeah, you. Like so everyone, night, night everyone's of. showing up to the show to see Mo rap. Yeah, <laughs> and like, so like I came, I came out and I like tried to talk. I tried to talk, but not much came out. And I was like, I can't even. Yeah, I can't even speak. And like they told them we couldn't speak. And uh, and the band Rock was gonna just do it instrumental, straight instrumental set. And people just started after like the first song. People just started screaming my lyrics. Yeah. So, you know, was which really was like, dope. oh, that's man. Dope. It was like, yeah. I that saw that shit awesome. for, like, when awesome. Sublime did that shit. It was fucking that's, shit. It that's just, it's one of those weird things where, like, yeah, it just must, must make you feel, especially knowing that all those people know your shit word yeah. for word. Like they took that much yeah, time, they heard wild. it that many times. You know what I'm and saying? It was a new album too. That's what you know I'm. Know yeah, what it's, like, it's crazy. It wasn't like the yeah. old joint. It was the new joint. Yeah. And that's that that tour prompted the rest of my move out here. I was gonna say. So what do you? So you don't. So you're not in the band. You're not playing triangle or symbol in the back or something like that. No. no. <laughs> Todd's a dope paid. producer though. Don't let him front. Though. I know that. I yeah. know. Nobody would ever pay money. I know about ridiculous. No, we're letting everyone know though. Without we're telling the world. Fucking. So what do you do out here though? Uh, these you got, days I run a, a craft cannabis company. Okay, tell me, uh, tell me a little Cam bit about Live that. Genetics. Uh, we have a small grow out in Holyoke, uh, and we exist in the space of social change, music, and cannabis, creating communities for people to to enjoy life. Okay. And through that, we we're working with these fine young gentlemen to bring our new strain to market. So one of the things that's important to me with this company is the intention of the revenue that we generate. Okay. Because I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't have children, so my legacy is always going to be the actions that I do and the things that I do for others, right? So if I'm going to be out here making any type of revenue that's substantial, I want to make sure that there's a part of it that goes to places that does some good. Okay. So the first thing we're doing in that is uh, every collection of strains that we put together sponsors an artist in the Massachusetts area. First one being Still Gold. And they get a grant of $40,000 a year that goes up as revenue goes up to help them move their career forward. Whether they want to go back on oh, tour sure. or somebody gets to quit their job or they buy a bunch of new equipment or whatever it is. They put it towards the festival. Whatever it is that they're doing that year to help create art and space for people who don't have space in Boston. And that's all that matters to us. So we're making sure that everything that we do has an impact that is going to help the community because there's not enough help for the community, just to be honest. I, I agree on, on both sides, on the cannabis side and on the music side. So like being able to cross over both of those things together is, I mean, that's what I'm doing here as well too. It's kind of the, the natural move mm -hmm. to go forward like in this because you said hip hop is super cool and it infiltrates every single aspect of life. Absolutely. Well, there's one thing out there that's a little bit cooler than hip hop mm -hmm. and actually goes across more genres than hip hop does, and that's mm -hmm. cannabis. And like we're in the we're in the very forefront of like cannabis right now. Like this is the this is the hip hop hip it to the hippity hip hip hop of cannabis. For yeah. sure, you know what I mean. Like that's where we're at right now. So to be on the forefront of it and to already like be so heavily involved, like you're already setting yourself up, obviously to you know go forward in the right aspect. And plus, I had no idea about that. The grant that's that's fucking dope. Yeah, that's dope. I mean, because that also like not being stressed out about money and being able to like being able to help people and being able to just even think and like just do your work and do your art is huge. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine that stuff like that goes a long fucking way. Um, when someone like Todd calls you up and says they want to do something like this, how, what is, how does that phone call go? Um, it's not every day. I mean, every every rapper wants to have their own strain of weed. Let's get that out all, of the fucking way. It all way. started on the on the patio of the trap. In the <laughs> okay, we would we'll smoke get... our morning joints. They didn't realize that they have been smoking the strain that I'm developing for them for like two years. And this, that is that's Prime. the gold that's the gold leaf. That's the gold leaf. So and that's that was the one that hit forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was okay. the one that hit forty, forty-one. Well, people, they got to know that. I mean, that was that's it, that's some fucking good weed, dude. I went up there and saw the weed. It's yeah. amazing weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's we, yeah, we, we, make sure we tell the people that this is fucking <laughs> amazing fucking weed. I, we we do all right. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, something like that. We we we're, we're lucky enough to have a really good run out of our last development f uh, cycle out of development. How, how long have you been growing for? Um, like 12 years. Yeah, okay. And then my partner was grown for 10 on his own. And we were developing strains for the legacy market because I don't understand selling something somebody else has. 
because then you're just arguing price at that point. And that just that isn't good business to me. So when we were in the legacy market, we had all of our own strains to begin with. So I knew when I was transitioning to the legal market what the business model was going to be. I just didn't tell them. And I just kept bringing strains to them until they're like, oh, I like this one. <laughs> and then we kept developing that over the little bit of time. And then when I came to them, I was like, yeah, that, that, the orange stuff that you've been smoking that you guys like. I was like, well, this is what we want to do with it. And it was, it was a much easier conversation. Um, I'm, I'm sure that's because you also want someone pushing the cannabis that they actually enjoy. Well, yeah, and that's a part of the company, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I, we're, we're doing it to be nice, but there also is a business model behind it, right? It gives yeah. me a, their audience, which is generally pretty cannabis friendly, to come in and offer more support to the band and give them another way to support the band, not just through t-shirts and ticket sales, but also through cannabis, which is then an experience on their own that then helps them a lot of times in their life, whether it's anxiety or, or sleep or whatever the other things. Is. So if we can bring things to market that are going to help still gold, move forward but also help their fans live a better life that's really the intersection we're trying to be at no nah, it, it's 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 dope i mean like i say when you guys get when you get the call like what do you how do you feel about that uh yeah i mean you go yeah yeah that sounds like a <laughs> yeah. good idea man you know what I mean? someone's like we're gonna do a strain for you and like you have like so people that don't know todd personally like have no idea that todd's like super fucking smart super like sneaky smart too and yeah. like always like doing shit like he's running in the background <laughs> while always. he's running in the in the foreground yeah, like but yeah. he's always i'm always wondering what the fuck is the back conversation like what is he thinking about right now like he's got some numbers crunching he's trying <laughs> to monetize he's, his he's, podcast he's, right he's, crunching, now. he's crunching numbers <laughs> yeah. in his fucking head right now Abs I'll, I'll, absolutely I'll say this though. I'll say this. Like, a lot of the shit that we do, we have to do on our own. Oh, videos, uh, like, you know, any anything that we're doing creatively, our clothes, booking, the, the booking like, yeah. like everything, we're Merch. doing it ourselves. Yeah. And like, so with the city hall thing, we had someone that said that there was gonna help, and like mean it. I mean, that's not that's a rare thing for us. Yeah. yeah. Todd is a rare thing for us, yeah. you know. So like, you know, if Todd's saying, "Oh yeah, we gonna we gonna help you, we 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 gonna help this thing is gonna help the shit," we're like, uh, like, as a homie, you're solid, so we get we get that. But we're like, people don't help, <laughs> like you know. So yeah. so at first it was like, yeah, this is dope, if it happens. It, you know, or whatever, but he just do says what he what he what he means. You know, he does what he what he what he says basically. So, yeah, no, he's a, like when he told me the plan. I don't know, like when I met you almost a year ago. I think I think a year ago today is when we became Facebook friends. But uh, anyways, um, you had told me this whole plan you had like a year ago. Like I just thought, and I thought it was fucking brilliant then. And now to see like a year go by, and you're like, oh nope, the next rollout's coming, and the next one's coming. You guys are actually doing a release for this product, right? Soon. Yeah. What's yeah. when is that part? Like when when is that party? Where is it? What's April twelfth at Sonya, and we got uh, Tori Tori and the Blade Runners. Um, it's gonna be a good time. We're just gonna, you know, put 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 some love in the air, you know. That's what I like to call it. Yeah, <laughs> you, know? you guys will have some samples that day. <laughs> yeah, and we'll be launching. So right now we just have Ace that are going to be hitting the market uh, in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be launching the pre rolls uh, right around the time of that party. That's that's dope right there. Do you want to tell people where you're going to be able to find this stuff, or do you not know yet? We're still so we know a couple of places, but until we have about another week's worth of time to get through our final inspection with the CCC, we can't get any sales contracts. So, but we know like probably the goods, trade routes, uh, Mellow. Um, Native Sun, um, Bud's Goods, uh, the Pass out in the Berkshires. So there's there's a bunch of interest. There's there's more interest than we have product, which is good right now. So I'm always happy for that. One of the things that's important to us is that because of the way the mass market works and the saturation issues that some people are running into, that we create a product that A, people are going to want, but B, is going to run out. So we don't have people just constantly, there's just not so much of it on the market. So there's gonna be small craft batches. We got some really fun things coming down the pipe with some edibles and some oil products and things that'll come and go as, as, as we make partnerships and just continue to put out quality product, right? That's gonna make an impact on people's lives. And then through that, we've got the grant for them. We've got the house music series. We've got a series of panels on urban culture and social change coming. We've got, uh, 
educational series for women and home improvement coming. We've got a bunch of things coming this year that'll kind of work along with all these things. So hold on, you just um, just back up a little bit. You said I know you ho- I know your house music thing, yeah, and yeah. You're, you're talking about you said like something home improvement for women or something like yeah. Can so you- we partnered with a, a company called Maven Construction uh, that's run by a woman of color, and they do they built the dorms at B at BU. Uh, they do civil city level construction with the city of Boston. And uh, we're working with them this fall to start an educational series where we're going to help women learn home improvement skills. Okay. How to patch holes in the wall, fix leaky toilets, leaky faucets, all these things so that their life is more enriched. They don't have to depend on people. They don't have to spend money when they don't need to. They're able to be more self-sustaining so that as they move forward through their lives, they have a better uh, they have a better path forward. How do you decide like what projects you want to work on? Because they're so like, I know they're kind of around the same topic, but they're so like just it's distinctively different you know what i mean it's where i feel impact is needed okay and where i feel most straight white men ignore okay and there's a lot of communities that are that are in need of help in need of impact and they just don't get it so okay. for us i would rather show up for those communities than show up for people that already have resources yeah that's it man it's- so when Fair I, enough. I look around and, and I look at the city or I look at the way things are working in America or in society, I try to focus our attention and our resources where I feel other people don't. <laughs> no, it's it's noble and it's 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 definitely you're you're definitely doing a great job. Um you're covering a lot of ground. You know? I mean, you guys too. I mean the the, the two of you together, the, the team of you guys are just a, a force anyways. It's just it's it's crazy from from the strain coming out to the festivals to the just the shows to the commercials mm. to the tourism aspect i mean what's next for you guys oh well, we got we got music coming yeah this is actually uh 2024 yeah. is the band's 10 year Ooh. uh 10 year anniversary as a band so we got a lot planned this year we got a lot of a lot of things a lot of activations we're going to do um a lot of fun stuff. We can't talk about a lot of them right now, but uh, yeah, they're going to be really, really good. Some of them hopefully pretty big. And yeah, we're just trying to celebrate. I mean, with us, man, Still Gold, we have like a, a large, I feel like family of people that, you know, we're lucky to to have. Like we have a lot of musicians that we work with on, on, on our albums and just a lot of, you know, people like Todd. And we try to do a lot of branding stuff too. Like we, we did a beer with Bentwater uh, a couple years ago and- yeah. And then, but but it through it all, like and with our beer too, you know, a, a proceeds of that went to a, a, a the hip hop transformation in Cambridge, which is a program was in Cambridge. Gold, was it Gold Lager? Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it was cool, man. Like just doing stuff like that is, is a lot to us, and keeping all the, you know, the things in the in the city. Kind of, kind of. When we when we when we get to incorporate the city, it just kind of makes it a bigger thing. At that point, it's more than just music to us and stuff. And like, so being able to take care of all the all the kind of aspects of, like you said, people may not necessarily put time into. Um, if we can do that, then that's that's a big thing for us as well. No, nah, it, it's it's dope. I, I like I think what you guys are doing is dope, anyways, and not even just like musically and everything, just in even just embracing the the tourism like ambassador of Boston thing like you guys look a certain way you know what I mean the collective of you guys Mm -hmm. so it's like that alone itself seeing all those kind of people together playing different instruments that someone that likes a saxophone might not necessarily think punk music would go with that or like hip-hop would go with that and to like do all that and bring all that together you need someone like you guys to do something like that and plus I don't know if you've ever you've obviously seen them live their fucking energy is is I don't know if there's any there's match to it. You know what I'm saying? And not around here, anyways. And you guys, fucking, you guys are moshing on stage. And like I said, this guy, I, this guy, I don't know how you can talk afterwards. I'm getting old, so enjoy it while you guys can. <laughs> Lots of tea. So you guys, when you did the city hall thing, one of the cool things that I found out afterwards talking to Ark about it was, um, you guys worked with Spencer um, from For Life, and you guys didn't even know who he really was. That's the, Spence is my homie. It was yeah. Kismet. Yeah, Spence, Spence is like the homie homie. Uh, we had him on the show like two weeks ago. You guys are coming out with us to Queens, New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Amazora, we, we got added Millie's to the fucking show. Excited about that. Appreciate you. We got, we got, yeah, we got a, we got a, we got a great fucking show coming out there with you guys. Um, 
Who's headlining out there? Locks. Locks. We got all three of the locks. Yeah. That's going to be crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah, which is the crazy part. Yeah, you got all three of them. And we got Millie's. We got a couple other people from Boston coming through as well, too. Yeah. But we can't wait to have you guys out there. It's going to be fucking awesome. It's fun, That's though. Um, you guys are just. We're going to have you back for the music show. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to get you guys in because of the drop. And I want to get you in before the party and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else you can tell me about the, the strain before. I know you guys have a photo shoot to get to, and I don't want to keep you too late because Ark's going to kick my ass. <laughs> I seen him on the chat. He, he reminds me of me. Like They're like, I'll do it. He's like, you got time. You got to be here. And they're like, well, yeah. we'll be. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, need some, got, you need someone like that. You need someone yeah. like that. Someone has to be like that. Yeah. So I don't want to just mess that relationship up. So we'll definitely get you guys <laughs> get you guys going to where you got to be. But I mean, is there anything else? And we guys have this, this show coming out with the... With the strain so, drop, yeah, we have the the party on April twelfth at Sonia's. Uh, the strain will come out probably early March. Uh, we'll definitely let everybody know. Uh, we'll definitely give you some information so you can yeah. include a screenshot for that. Um, the house music event is next Saturday at the Rockwell in Somerville. Come on down, have a good time. That also helps to support all the other things that we do. The first fifty people that come in get a complimentary drink. Uh, so get there early, get a free drink, come shake your ass, have a good time. Um, everything else is coming up down the pipeline. The flower itself is super sativa, so it's very energetic, very focusing. <laughs> You're not going to watch it and pass the fuck out. You're going to watch it and be able to do some shit, which I feel like we need a little bit more in the market these days. So did you like mean for it to be a super sativa with yes. uh, like because you were you were shopping them doing R&D so you kept shopping them super sativas. Well, I wanted to develop sativas because I I prefer them. Yeah. yeah uh, I'm, less smoke. I'm too old to be that stoned all day long. I have too much shit to do. Yeah. So I need something that will calm the voices in my head as opposed to put me to sleep, right? And being a musician, I need something that keeps me focused. Right, I don't want to get into the studio and get so high that like I can't think of what I'm doing and I just get all drowsy. So the sativa part was important for me. So I was developing it that way, and then when this situation came up, it just really made sense. Yeah, no, I I, I get it, and just it's just it's a match too with the energy, you yeah. know. Um, when you guys like writing and shit and, and making your music, do you find um, cannabis helps or? Yes, absolutely, man. I get I get I get super focused, you know, and and uh. You know, I do, it's not all the time that I use um, any cannabis or anything like that when I write. But, you know, every once in a while, every once in a while. What's I, your method of consumption? Uh, method of consumption. Edible. Edibles. I edibles. Can't, edibles scare the shit out of me, man. They're like, they make these things too fucking strong now. Like, you take an edible and you just like, it's just tick, tick, tick. What the fuck's going to happen? Like, it's it, You know what? I'm trying to figure out, like... In a lot of ways, I'm also trying to figure out how it works. I, I had these cookies. I had these cookies <laughs> Experiment. during the pandemic, and I would take half. There's these little cookies. I'll take half, and i eat one every day. Every day I would do that. Went to sleep, took one. I would took one, went to sleep, and then um, one, one day after having these for like two months, and I woke up so high that I was like, you know when you have to look yeah. in the mirror and be like, yo, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> gonna be like, I was like, my heart was racing, but I, the same amount as, I, as I've been, as I had, so I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out, you know, but um, edibles is, is way, way fun to ride for me. <laughs> you know? how, about, how about you? What's, what's your method? Uh, you carry, you carry, all, you're one of all the, of them. You carry a pack with you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the I pack like, carriers. Oh, see, I've gone through phases in life, though. I smoked blunts forever, that, and then like my lungs were just. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, yeah I, can't I, can't, I can't either. I can't, I can't, I can't either. I, it doesn't matter if it's fronto or whatever. Right. Like it don't matter. I, now yeah. at my like, if I'm at my house, I take. I got a little bong. I take bong hits, and I eat edibles. But I like I like it all though. I used to, li- you know, Kevin Muse, right? Yeah. So I used to live with Kevin. So he he ruined me for a lot for a lot of cannabis for a long time because that dude is just like the man when it comes to that. Big shout out Kev cuz my man, that dude would just get me like just staring off in his space. He's the first dude I did dabs with. He like he ta- he hit me to the whole dark side of like yeah, and he's the dude with the timer and the, he got all of his dope shit out and like yeah. So that so after living with Kevin, I I felt 
like I, I had to chill for a little while <laughs> or otherwise it was like it was like that fiend shit like I'm never gonna get there again like you know so it's like some of these fucking dabs you can't you can't get there again Doug, like, yeah that's what I'm saying like, just, and he's the one like, I got this, the sauce diamonds and I'm like bro you yep I just I just all of us it's like one of those things where you just like you open your eyes like two hours later and you're like what the fuck happened <laughs> Todd got that good hash though. He, you, you don't do the sauces and the diamonds, you, but you got that really good hash. Yeah. Yeah. The the cool thing about this is uh, the Keef cures gold instead of amber. Ah. So it's all marketing. So yeah, it just really worked oh, out we, that way. You, do you guys the see the, the the? This is here. Can we get just here's yeah, the yeah, packaging? No, yeah. 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 Um, oh, you guys. Yeah. Is the camera the right there? The whole thing holds that. Yeah, yeah, man. Look at this. Yeah, well, you know, but like right there, man. We already got you on there. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, man. We're, come on, come on, homie. We're like, we're like the Still Gold of Podcast. <laughs> this is yo. You guys are. You are <laughs> for real. Still Gold of Podcast. You know, yo, big up all the art in here too. By the way, yeah, the I see a lot of the homie stuff too, and like yeah. I'm Merc. Yo, yeah, all the homies. It, yeah, Rest this is great. Peace sense to my guy, Mize. Man. Yeah, Mize. Yeah. Sense. Yeah, we are. We all. We all kind of you know, ran sense. in the yes, same circles sense. too. Like back in the day too. We all know people from from the past big up you know a lot of the dudes at marty a lot of a lot of dope people that Rest we all we all got to we all got to meet man so it's cool being in here seeing all seeing a lot of this appreciate man. you coming in here and seeing it man like this this shit this is the reason why like even that right there that right there that's a that's a fucking uh realm that's dope uh, it's a big fucking realm, realm. Yeah, yeah, realm man, yeah, yeah it's a dude. fucking yeah so <laughs> everything in here is all like it's all done by somebody yeah, for something I, yeah it's, it's pretty it's pretty dope shit man yeah. Joe, man, you guys. Oh, first time you got high. Uh, Thirteen years old with my man uh, Theo, who stole weed from his sister. Ah, sister, usually, usually it's mom or dad. You? Uh, probably around that thirteen, and I smoked and smoked, and I did not get high. And then the next time, I was like, "Oh, it's it's impossible for me to." And I hit it once, and I was done. Done. <laughs> That's like the um beginning of um. What the fuck is that movie? Half baked. Yeah. <laughs> when they can't get no, high, yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They, they hit it again, and then yeah. the zabba zabba buzz and that's shit. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly what happened. I thought I was like, oh, it I, did, I, did, I must have done it wrong or whatever. But no, that's it works now though. It works. It, it, work, it, work, works. it works now. Yeah. And Todd, first time, uh, who'd you steal it from? <laughs> nobody. They sold it down the street from where I grew up. So I was like twelve. I just graduated eighth grade. It was my eighth grade graduation party. Uh, me and a friend s dumped out my mother's cigarette and stuffed buds inside of it, like little nice. tiny buds, because we didn't know no yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. And smoked that and drank a beer for the first time. I feel like Todd just grew up like early fast. Like he was just on the oh, block yeah. beating oh, people yeah. up at like <laughs> young age. He was in Chicago yeah, doing wild shit. Yeah, uh, just, not Buffalo. Oh, you were in Buffalo? <laughs> yeah. Even, even worse. Yeah, 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 even yeah. worse, yo. <laughs> but, yeah, I just. Yeah, that this, cold this, made you bitter. There's a book in there somewhere. You know, there's, there's a book. There's, <laughs> there's a couple books. I, oh, for sure. I, I don't talk about that stuff on camera. <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna ask you. You gotta pay for that. Wait for the, wait for the autobiography no, to come no, out. No, there's no Instagram for that. <laughs> um, if you guys want to look into this camera right here, um, not well, you you can look on that side. But okay. look, these guys will go first. You can look on here. Tell them where to find you. Where to find you know, can alive. Where to find the weed. Where to find everything. Still, stillgold.com do that that's a one stop shop for yeah, everything for everything us, us. You know. don't find me don't find my personal Instagram <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll link it don't worry about it <laughs> uh, if you're looking for the strain stillgold.com is going to have all the information uh, can live genetics on Instagram um, and that's really it for the store it's really hard to put that kind of stuff on social media too many things get taken down and stuff so yeah. we're just existing through the events that we do through the band and then through through the Instagram and um, I talked to Arc too I'll be up at you guys release with cameras and stuff like that we're gonna get a bunch of content up there and shit too that's so dope. we'll do all that so we're we'll super excited about that yo that's gonna be a great time yeah no and after when you guys put some new music out too we'll get Van in here we'll do you get Big Dookie Chain and all that shit as well yeah, too we'll get the whole so. thing Van Styles fucking that yeah <laughs> and I wanna get up to uh, your studio as well Oh yeah. yeah, yeah! Beautiful fucking space. Beautiful space. One of the one of the nicest studios I think it's that I've seen around. And like, a, it's nice. Yeah, you guys put a lot of put a lot of work into that thing. Ark, 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 Ark. That's Ark. Yeah, he, he made that place beautiful. It's, like, it's amazing. Even the wood. It's just it's everything. Yeah. It's just it looks. It's really nice. But yo, um, fuck her chilling. Sense lives. Marty forever. Peace. Oh, okay.
Ready? Now go. This is Christopher talking from Still Gold. You should. <laughs> <laughs>